Good morning, developers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Rob, and in this video, I am gonna explain the process of using JSON Web Tokens for user authentication in contrast with cookies. We're not gonna implement anything, it's just a, a drawing on the board to explain how the process works. The reason I make these videos is because there are so many times when I have learned a, a new API, a new library, in the case of user authentication, long ago, I desperately wish someone would have just explained to me how the process works. Implementing it is obviously the goal. That's where we want to get to where we can use it effectively. But understanding it is a big part of that. And it, it, it's sometimes it's hard to ask. I don't want to be the guy who says, hey, what is a JSON web token again? Right? And everybody kind of looks at me and think, oh, Rob's the guy who doesn't know how JSON web tokens work. Right? <laughs> that's, just, that's just insecurity, but it is a real human thing. So... We're going to start off by talking about how cookies work back in the old days. Uh, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't necessarily say old days because server-side systems like WordPress would still, uh, still use something like this. Okay, we've got a, a user's browser, right? That's supposed to be a laptop. And the user wants to go to a website. So they hit the server. And again, this is a server-side rendered page. So PHP or something like that. The page gets sent back. Okay? And on that page, there's a, a username and a login. The user fills out the, the username and login and they send it back up. So we have another go back up. The server is going to authenticate. It's going to check to see in, in the database, do I have this username and this password, right? Whatever. I'm not going to talk about that here. I can link another video if, if there's a lot of requests for, for how that process works. But as soon as that is done, the server is going to save a little, uh, a little block of memory with all of this user's information. So whatever data that is, it's called session data, is gonna get stored on the server. And that relates very specifically to this person. That is not going to get sent back. Instead, it's also going to create a little hash. Okay? A cookie. The cookie is going to get sent back to the user and every single every single time going forward the browser requests a new page for any reason that cookie is going to get sent up the server will see the cookie and say oh let me check i have a match this is your stuff so i can i can use your stuff to do whatever i need to do and i will send you back whatever the 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 response is right this is the normal request response cycle you send up your cookie I've got some data on the, the server that relates to your cookie. I can use that to build the page and I will send it back to you. It's kind of like your valet ticket. Like if you, you drop off, or a coat check ticket. You drop off your coat, they give you a ticket. When you come back, you give them the ticket. They know which coat is yours because they have a match. This suffers from one glaring problem that I'm going to explain in two parts that is no small thing in modern web apps. It is very, very difficult to scale this well for two reasons. Again, one, every cookie gets sent up every single request. So anything that, that you have down here, any cookie, right? However many there might be, and there might be lots, and they might be big, they're always gonna get sent up, even if they don't need to go. And that creates bandwidth hungry application. The other thing is the data storage on the server, it all has to be there for every single user. So this part right here, where that user's data is at on the server, every single user that has an active session is gonna have that block. And it, again, it may not need to be stored there. And depending on how much it is, it can be a really big problem. So there is a scalable problem. Cookie authentication is still very widely used, but again, it's difficult to scale well, so we have an alternative. I clear this side up. I'm going to leave this one to contrast with it. I'll put over here a, a cookie system. We have large front ends for big web apps now. So they're not server-side rendered anymore. And as I said, we want things to be scalable. So you've got a React front end or an Angular front end, and they're making lots of HTTP requests. In, in old, again, in old days, you, you just would request a new page, you'd get everything, and then you'd sit there until you needed a new page. Just for fun, uh, I'm gonna open up Facebook. Facebook is easy to pick on. 
going to go to the network tab and I'm going to leave it up down here at the bottom. And just on the initial load, I'll leave it up there until it goes completely stagnant. But you can watch how many HTTP requests are made. Okay. Every time one of those is made, every single cookie has to go up. <laughs> Doesn't make any difference what's in there. It, it's going to go up for every single request, as long as a few things match, like the domain is, is correct and so on. Okay. It's a little more complicated than that, but they're all going to go up. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of really large websites that still use the system. It, it tends to be more secure kind of out of the box because the data is on the server. As an alternative though, and you'll see what I mean here in just a second, the process starts off the same with web tokens. And I, I will say JSON web token because that's the type of web token I use. There are other, uh, there are other ones out there, but that's the one that I use. We make that initial request. We have our login screen again, like from react or angular, something like that. We, we send up an HTTP request. The server validates it, right? Is this username and this password? Do they match? Yes, this is a, a real person. This, this is a valid account. Instead of creating a piece of data on the server with all the session data and then sending a cookie back, we can create a web token which has data inside of it. It will carry that data around. And we will likewise have a key. The key, there are a couple different ways to do it. Asymmetric and symmetric encryption. It, that's not important right now. But the, the JSON web token can always be verified as valid by the key when it gets to the server. So in this JSON web token, it's literally going to be JSON. It is an object and you can encrypt it if, if it needs to be encrypted. That's beyond the scope of our, uh, of, of this video, but maybe you put in there UID of 10 and then you have some kind of expiration date, whatever. It doesn't make any difference. This data is going to be carried around inside of this token, which we are going to send back to the user. The user does stuff, makes another HTTP request. Uh, we'll stick with green here. It's going to send that web token back up. The server is going to check. Is this one that I made? It will look at the key. Oh yes, this is one that I made. What's in here? Oh, there's a UID of 10. I know who this person is. That again is in contrast with over here. The data is stored on the server, maybe a ton, maybe a little. When the cookie comes in, it will check the cookie, find the data. Oh, I've got the data. In this case, the data follows the token around. You can put as much or as little as you want in there. In most cases, I have lots of web tokens. And the big advantage here is that one, we don't have to store a ton of data on the server. Two, we don't have to send a, a ton of cookies up every single time. We can selectively, like I said, maybe have a bunch of JSON web tokens and maybe in this other one, we've got name and we've got account information and so on, right? We've got a whole bunch of data inside there. That one's going to go back. I will use a different color here. We'll send this one back and maybe on every single request, we need this one with the user ID and then the server. Oh, I know what, what user you are. Cause I have your user ID every once in a while. We need this big one to go back. And so when that happens, we will send this one up. Something important to remember is that HTTP is stateless, which means every single one of these requests is totally new. We're always starting from scratch. The server has no idea when this request is made, who you are or what you want. Everything is going to be contained inside of this. Again, you're carrying the data around with you and you validate that it is real data. When you get to the server over here, same process an HTTP request that's coming from Facebook, which is sending out hundreds a second. It seems like it's going to come up, but instead of the data being inside that thing, it is the cookie, which, which corresponds to some data on the server. And then it gets sent out. Okay. That is the gist. And I've got cookie up there. Let's put over here, JSON web token or web token if you prefer. But with cookies, we're going to send up a small cookie, which is going to relate to some data on the server. And if you have dozens of them, and if you, ch if you check your applications tab in, in any of your browsers and go look, you'll start to see all of the cookies that are stored. All of those are going up every time. And that data has to be stored on the server. 
over here with our web tokens, we pass the data around. So if you've got a ton of data, those tokens can be very big. The advantage though is that we don't have to send it up every single time, only the pieces that we need. And two, because the data follows the token around, we don't have to store any data on the server. That is pretty much how they work. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time.